So this is our third podcast in solutions, and we are going to start talking about the math that's kind of involved. We've talked about solubility and how much is dissolved, is it saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated. Now we're going to actually put so now we're going to put a number to the solubility that's going to tell us how much. So concentration, okay, so a concentration tells, me, tells us how much dissolved. I think I made my pen um, a little bit thick. Okay, it's called molarity and it's a concentration. So if I say I have a three molar solution, that's saying I have three moles in every one liter. So molar is a unit of concentration. We could have, um, what are some other ones? We could just say I have that many grams dissolved in 100 milliliters. Okay, that is a concentration. It's telling you how much is dissolved and how much water. So molarity is just using a different unit. It's one of the most common ones we use, and we use this so much in AP. So molarity, look at what we have, moles over liters. So how many moles in that many liters? Couple things. It has to be moles, and it has to be liters. No, no shortcuts on that. Okay, we can rearrange these. Okay, moles, all I'm doing is rearranging my formula. Okay, V is your volume. So sometimes we also think of it as molarity times liters. These mean the same thing. Or what if I need to solve for molarity, excuse me, not molarity, what if I want to solve for liters? Liters would be moles over the molarity. These are all different versions of the same formula. Sometimes we can use a formula or you can just think of it as sometimes dimensional analysis. So let's look at how those are going to look. So I have 40 grams of glucose. Here's the first problem. I have 40 grams and it's glucose. I don't see grams anywhere in my formula, so what do we have to do to our grams? Yep, change them to moles. That means you need your periodic table. You should have a calculator out if you need to pause me to go get all of that. So 6 times 12.06 plus 12 plus 6 oxygens. The molar mass is 180.15 grams. So I have less than one mole. So in the calculator, 40 divided by 180, I have 0 0.22 moles. And molarity, concentration, moles per liter, I have 0.355 liters because what do you need to know? A thousand milliliters is one liter. You just need to know that. So you're going to divide this by a thousand. We can, you don't always have to show this work. This is how I did that in my head because I know one liter, you divide it by a thousand. And so that's how I got my 0.355. So what is your concentration? It's a 0 0.625. Okay, your label. You can just put a capital M, which stands for moles per liter. You can say moles per liter or capital M. So other ways these problems can look. Determine the mass to make. Look at what I know. I know a volume and I know a molarity. Well, I need mass. Well, no American formula doesn't ask for mass, so that means I'm going to have to solve for moles first. Moles is your molarity times liters. So it's a 1.75 molar solution. You have 2.5 liters. So this means you have quite a few moles in here. 4.375. Okay, I'm not going to worry about significant figures till the end. I don't round until the end. Okay, well, I need, uh-oh, I'm going to have to write my fer formula. Barium is a plus 2, minus 1. So barium nitrate. So I'm going to need the molar mass of this. So you're going to have to look up 1 barium, 2 nitrogen, 6 oxygens. And its molar mass is 261.34. That's how many grams in 1 mole. So I'm going to put this here. So 1 mole is 261.34 grams. So you just multiply. Now I'm going to round it. The calculator would tell me 1143, but I only want three significant figures. So I'm going to turn this to 1140 grams. That's how much my solute, my solute, what's dissolved is barium nitrate. Okay. 
Now look at the last version. We're going to see it. Look at what we want. We want the volume. So the volume, when you rearrange your formula, volume is liters. That is your moles divided by your molarity. So it's 0.367 moles. I'm just plugging in what I know. Divided by, here's your molarity, 0 0.125. So we have 2.94 liters of solution. Or excuse me, this is how much volume it's going to take liters of solution, which is the water. OK, number four, I'm leaving it for you. Silver nitrate, here I will help you with this. Silver plus one, nitrate minus one. Its molar mass is 169. 0.87 grams per mole. You'll need that number, so there you go. I'm actually giving you that number. Finish the rest of the problem. Okay, that's one version of math we can look. Now let's look at another use of the molarity. So now I know the concentration. These two formulas, kind of a side note, these are what I do all the time. If you've ever seen me make solutions, I don't have bottles and bottles. We don't have bottles and bottles of solutions in the back. We have solids. We have to calculate and make solutions. That's what the top formula is. Then I also have volumes of concentrated solutions that I need to dilute. So look at what your dilution is. You're going to make it less concentrated. So what's that mean? It means it's going to make it less concentrated. How are you going to do that? You're going to have to add water. Dilute it down means add some water. So look at what we have. M1 just means your initial, so M1 is your initial molarity. V1 is volume of the initial. You have to make sure your ones go together and your twos. So then M2 is your new molarity. So if you notice something's changing, that's how I know when to use my formulas. And V2 then is your new total volume. And I say to total because there's a difference when you're kind of looking at it. So let's kind of see what these problems look like. What concentration results when water is added to 50 milliliters of a 12 molar hydrochloric solution to prepare 2 liters of solution? So look at how these two numbers go together. So this is V1 then is 50 milliliters. M1 is how much do I have of that solution? I have 12 molar. I know my V2 is 2 liters. And M2 is what it's asking for. This is my unknown. OK, one thing to notice, these are different. You don't always have to change these to liters, but they do have to be the same. So I'm just going to go ahead and change this one to liters then. I could have changed this to 2,000, but just change one or the other. So my formula, M1V1 is M2V2. Then I'm just going to plug in what I know. It's a 12.0 and I have 0.5 liters of it. You do not know this concentration and you want 2 liters of it. So then you're going to multiply 12 times 5 divided by 2. So you need to divide by 2 to get it by itself. So x, which equals m2, that's your concentration, equals a 3 molar solution. So you've diluted it from a 12 molar solution, which is pretty concentrated. That means there's 12 moles in there to a 3 molar. There's only 3 moles in there. OK, number 6. Same thing. A 3.34 molar sodium chloride is diluted by adding 300 and, or excuse me, 35 milliliters to 50 milliliters of the solution. So sometimes the numbers aren't always together. You kind of have to read them and think it. So this is my M1. This is what I have initially, 3.34 molar. OK, and it's adding 35 milliliters to the 50 I already have. So that means my V1 that I already have is 50 milliliters. So my new volume, we have to picture it. You're going to have, so look what I had in my beaker. 
I had 50. You added in 35 more. So look at your new volume is 85 milliliters as a new volume. And you're asking what concentration will this be after you add it together. So we're going to plug in M1, 3.34. V1 is 50. I'm not changing them to liters. They're all the same volume, so you do not have to change them. And it's 85. Again, you're going to multiply, then divide by 85. So this X, which is your new concentration, I always like saying what is X equal because we're not a math class. X equals something, and that's 1.96 molar. That's the concentration of that solution. Okay, so guess what? I'm going to leave 7 for you, but I want you to read this really, really, really carefully. Read it very carefully because I'm expecting to have two answers when you come in. So you have two problems to finish. You need to finish number 4 and you need to finish number 7 and that's where we're going to kind of start and then at class you're actually going to do some dilutions and you're going to make some solutions. So we will see you at our next class.